Indonesia's economy is rising fast with massive factories like these ones dominating the outskirts of Jakarta. I last met President Joko Widodo, or Jokowi as he's more often known, in his hometown of Solo, but that was almost three years ago and a lot has changed. You've dealt with Elon Musk? Yeah. We left Jakarta's presidential palace by convoy for a huge Hyundai factory built during COVID on three quarters of a million square meters of land. Jokowi, who once ran a furniture business, has equally large ambitions for his country's economy. He's banned the export of raw nickel in favor of downstream products and will instead produce refined nickel that will be used in the batteries that power electric vehicles. An equally impressive factory is being built nearby for just that purpose. If you work in a factory, is the salary much higher? Comparing, comparing with the other industry, yeah. in the automotive industry, higher, nice. much higher. Higher than furniture? Of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if Jokowi has his way, other raw materials will follow. Coal, bauxite, tin, gold and copper, even palm oil. This November, Indonesia will host the G20. Jokowi is one of the few leaders to have met both China's Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin since the invasion of Ukraine. This is a conversation with President Jokowi of Indonesia. President Jokowi, thank you for talking to Bloomberg again. When I was last here in 2019, you had just been re-elected. Now you're halfway through your final term as president of Indonesia. You, know, you are the biggest country in Southeast Asia. You are right in the middle of the United States and China and their arguments. You recently said the world was in dire need of responsibility and wisdom. I suppose my first question for you is, was Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan was it wise? Was it even responsible from your perspective? Yeah, uh, rivalitas antara negara-negara besar memang... The rivalry of the big countries is indeed worrying. What we want is for this region to be stable, peaceful, so that we can build economic growth. And I think not only Indonesia, Asian countries also want the same thing. Damai. Sehingga kita bisa membangun pertumbuhan ekonomi. I think you are being very diplomatic, President. Um, there was word that she was going to come, Nancy Pelosi was going to come to Indonesia, and then you decided to change that plan. Is, is that true? Tidak, tidak. No, no. We will openly receive, but there was no visit. Kami terima, tapi tidak ke Indonesia. There now seems to be a more serious danger of a Chinese invasion in Taiwan. We had a, a, a report from a general at Congress saying it could happen by 2027. And there is a concern that if there is a conflict in Taiwan, it would spill over into the South China Sea where you have territory, territory that China contests. And there are territorial um, claims there. Is, the, is Indonesia ready to defend itself or defend its land and waters in that case? Are you ready for that conflict militarily if it happens? We do want the region to be peaceful. It shouldn't come to the point that tensions rise until it affects economic growth and then later on affects the well-being of our people. In my opinion, it is very important that there is a space for dialogue between leaders, especially leaders of big countries. The global situation is extremely difficult and there shouldn't be further unnecessary issues. We are going through a food crisis and an energy crisis that hasn't been resolved. The pandemic still exists in some countries. Is that going to be a big theme for you at the G20? that you want to turn the debate away from these rivalries between superpowers and focus on issues like food security, inflation? 
Yes, it is better than having open conflict. It is better to have a forum for dialogue like G20. If there is space for discussion, we can discuss and have debates and hopefully come up with solutions. This is what we want. This is why we have a space for dialogue. I know that you have invited President Xi Jinping to come to the G20. Um, has, he, has he said he will come here in November? Yeah. Yes, President Xi Jinping will come. And President Putin? President Putin has also told me he will come. Do you worry at all about the G20 being this conflict where you have the democracies coming forward with plans and you have Putin sitting there in one room like this and you have Xi Jinping with his own agenda. It will be a very difficult, very difficult house party to run. At the G20, we do not want to add to conflict or problems, but to resolve the problems. How we can resolve all these problems, not to add problems and conflict. You've already visited, you know, you've been to see Putin, you've been to see Zelensky, you've been to see Xi Jinping. Do you think that by bringing people together, that that is a way to solve conflict? Sometimes it can increase it. <laughs> there must be communication, even if it doesn't necessarily resolve the problem. It is better to have dialogue than to have open conflict. When we started this interview, I said that, you know, you were in the middle between China and America, but having looked at Indonesia, I looked at the numbers, American investment in Indonesia over the past five years is $9 billion. China has invested $40 billion. You know, you look around here, we have a Chinese car factory around the corner. China's, China is buying up a lot of the refineries that make precious metals. America at the moment is losing the battle for hearts and minds in Indonesia, but also in Southeast Asia. Do you, do you think that is fair? This is an approach that needs to be renewed because what is needed by countries in Asia, including Indonesia, is investment. What investment? If it comes from China, we welcome it. If it comes from America, we welcome it. We are not going to be choosy. <laughs> you are not choosy, but one side. One side is coming and saying, I want to invest, I want to trade. And the other one is saying, no trade packs, um, I, and, and I want to come and talk about other things. That is why I said previously they need to renew their approach. <laughs> You've dealt with Donald Trump, who famously insulted his allies and promoted America first. Joe Biden was supposed to be different, but rhetoric aside, is there any change? Surely Joe Biden is still saying America first. He just isn't insulting you at the same time. Indonesia wants to be friends with everyone, with any country. We don't have problems with any country. Each country will have their own approach. Each leader has their own style and approach, so there shouldn't be a problem. But now what's needed by Indonesia is investment, technology that will change our society. I just wanted to ask you about ASEAN, since you mentioned it. You have a group of countries, but it is one where you look at the countries, it includes Myanmar, which seems to have all these problems with human rights and so on. Why do you keep Myanmar in ASEAN? We already had a meeting in Jakarta with all members of ASEAN. All the leaders came, including Myanmar's junta. And there's a consensus, five-point consensus. The implementation hasn't taken place, and the approach we have taken hasn't worked. That's the complication we're facing. There are several ASEAN meetings after that, which we did not include Myanmar participation. One very last thing on foreign policy. You talked about seeing, you've been to go and see Vladimir Putin and tried to talk to him, and you saw President Zelensky in Ukraine. 
I think you focused on food security and, and issues like that. Do you, do you see any sign of peace or progress there as the president of the G20? Yeah. Saya ke Kiev dan berbicara dengan President Zelensky. I went to Kiev and talked to President Zelensky one and a half hours. Then went to Moscow, Russia to meet with President Putin and talk with him almost two and a half hours. Tetapi saya melihat peluang itu kecil. I want to see a space for dialogue after the meeting so we can discuss. Anywhere is no problem, but I see the chances are small. So I turned to issues like food crisis, and President Zelensky said they can't export because there were no guarantees for security to ship goods from Odessa port to Istanbul. That was the message I conveyed to President Putin, and President Putin said he will guarantee security for ships to enter Odessa. Those are what I told the media. Can we look at industrial policy and resources, which has been your, your big crusade? Just to explain to viewers, you know, you have 30% of the world's nickel, you have 57% of the palm oil, you're the biggest thermal coal exporter, um, and your plan is to move Indonesia up the value chain so that you export batteries and cars, not nickel ore. And so around here we have the car assembly plants, we have all the things. It's a very good place for you to make this case. But you have done this in quite an aggressive way. You know, you have said, you've told people, I will stop you exporting raw materials. So you, you put, in 2014, you put export bans on copper ore and iron ore then. Um, you've now talked about copper concentrates and nickel pig iron. I want a, sort of a couple of specific questions on, on this. Um, can you say when what's coming next? Will you stop pig iron and, and ferro-nickel, both nickel things? Will you stop those going out? Or what about copper? Yeah, kita ingin nilai tambah itu ada di Indonesia. We want the added value to be in Indonesia, so there will be state income in form of tax, provide jobs in Indonesia. And the most important thing is that we can enjoy the added value. Di Indonesia. John, I'll give you nickel as an example. When we exported raw materials four to five, six years ago, the value was only $1.1 billion. Once we went downstream in 2021, our exports were valued at $20.8 billion. That's nearly 18 times. That's what we want to do with bauxite, copper, tin, crude, palm oil, and others. We are not being closed. We are being open, indeed. U.S., China, Europe want to come and cooperate. We are open. The message is you want people to come here and use these raw materials to make things. And so, just, just to be clear, you, ferro, ferro nickel and pig iron, they will be the next ones to be stopped, exported, so they, people have to use them here. Yeah, kalau di sini sudah siap, ya mesti otomatis akan berhenti. When we, the industry here, are ready, exports automatically will stop. What we want is to build a large ecosystem to produce electric cars, as many as we can here in Indonesia. Mobil listrik yang sebanyak-banyaknya di Indonesia. And bauxite and tin will also be in this list of materials to use inside Indonesia. Yeah, betul. Karena misalnya, yes, that is correct. Not only nickel, bauxite, for example, is used to produce alumina. And then be used to make car's body or car's chassis. Chassis, yeah. You've talked about putting a tax on nickel products, you know, the next stage up. Is that going to happen this year? An export tax on nickel products? It is possible to impose it this year. I can see around here you've had a lot of success. You and I went round a rather nice car factory and you have the electric vehicle, um, the, the electric battery um, construction. You got Hyundai, LG, Volkswagen and Toyota seem keen. Um, the person who everyone talks about is Tesla. And you have a $5 billion contract to supply nickel ore, but you wanted to have a Tesla car factory. It now looks as if you might get a, or you hope to get a, a Tesla battery facility. And I wondered if you could give us any news on that. Is that any closer? 
Enggak, yang kita inginkan uh, semua adalah mobil listriknya. If it is Tesla, we want them to build electric cars in Indonesia. From Ford as well, we want them to build electric cars here. From Hyundai, electric cars. From car makers in Japan, Toyota and Suzuki. Menjadi sebuah ekosistem besar. We want a huge ecosystem of electric cars for the world. We don't just want to reach batteries only because this is just half of it. You've made a very eloquent case, and Elon Musk is a famously reasonable man. Um, why, why has he said no to the car factory then? Is it because of the environmental side? Masih, masih dalam proses pembicaraan. It's still in discussion. Let's see later the final result. <laughs> you, have, you have negotiated with Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin. Um, uh, either of them as difficult to deal with as Elon Musk? <laughs> Everything needs time. I don't want to go quick with no result. It needs an intense communication and the result will show. Do you think there has been an element though, again looking around here, that it has been, it tends to be the Asian countries which have been first into trying to trying to build electric battery facilities here ya ke depan ke depan kita ingin membangun sebuah ecosystem besar in the future we want to build a large ecosystem for electric cars that is truly environmentally friendly so the energy will come from green energy such as hydropower plants geothermal solar panel sea waves wind yang dihasilkan nanti ada produk-produk hijau Indonesia has big potentials for those things. That means what we produce are green products. That is the future because we have this potential for green energy, renewables about 434,000 megawatts. The famous case of the palm oil. Um, I think people back in April, you suddenly imposed an export ban on palm oil. The price shot up to $1,600 that flooded the domestic market, then you changed your mind, and partly because the domestic market was so full of, of palm oil, you let it export, the price has come down. Some people would say that you know, Indonesia is now a very honestly run country, but it's, you know, it can be capricious. You, you change between these things. Do you think the palm oil ban was a mistake in retrospect? Yeah, apapun, uh Saat itu, keadaan, uh, pasar domestic. At that time, the domestic market situation, there was a price spike of almost double, so we made a policy. There were several policies, but it didn't solve the problems four months on, so we stopped exporting crude palm oil, and the domestic price fell. Then we resumed exports. I think it's okay, no problem. Will you remove the obligation to serve the domestic market first, the famous DMO, this idea that you, palm oil has to be offered to the domestic market first? Do you now want to get rid of that? Yeah. Ke depan, apabila sudah... If going forward the price is stable, we can remove the DMO policy. We prioritize our national interest. Sekali lagi, kepentingan nasional tetap kami nomor satu, kan? A consistent thing you, you've been talking about is green industries and the environment. You have a, a goal to make Indonesia carbon neutral by 2060. As you know, most of your energy now comes from coal. Coal prices have gone up. And I wondered, will you, will you stick to your pledge that you would build no new coal-fired plants, that that has gone forever? Our target is very ambitious, 41% 2030, and 2060 we should be at zero, but this requires technology and funding, money. The potential is clear. We have potential of renewable energy to produce 434,000 megawatts. Tetapi untuk shifting bergesernya dari coal, but to shift from coal to renewable is not an easy thing because the price to produce energy from coal is still cheaper than geothermal. The cost for solar panels is also cheaper. 
untuk hydro power memang sebetulnya lebih hydro power is actually cheaper but the initial investment is huge we need investment from outside to shift from coal to renewable renewable you're sticking to your pledge that there will be no new coal-fired power sudah yeah Yes, it's being done. It's just that there are still some that are still in the process of being completed, not new ones. Indonesia has an oversupply of electricity. Half of the emissions from Indonesia come from land use and forest clearing. And 51% of Indonesia is forest. And you have committed to keep that 50, you know, keep to that level. But you are still letting people cut down rainforest, which is the really most useful bit. And they're, they're building other forests, farm forests. Isn't that the wrong thing? You should be protecting the rainforest first and then thinking about the other kinds of forest next. John. John, forest fire happened more than 20 years ago. Since 2016, it has been reduced by 85%. We also do restoration on more than 2 million hectares of peatlands. Within the next three years, we will also do restoration for 660,000 hectares of mangroves forest. In the past five years, we also imposed a moratorium on new palm oil plantation. Does it make you cross when people from the rich world, like me, appear, and countries that have already taken down their forests <laughs> Gone, used their coal, and you have a country of 270 million much poorer people who have not done this yet, and we come and lecture you about this. Massive forest clearing is in the past. No more today. What we have now is restoration, revitalizing, taking care of the environment. I have required all mining companies to build a nursery for reclamation of their mining areas. We are working to improve the environment. I can take you to the nearest nursery center in Bogor that produce about 2 million seedlings a year. And we will have 30 of those nurseries. Then you will believe that we are serious. <laughs> can I ask you very quickly about Nusantara, this capital that you are building, $34 billion. The aim is to finish it by 2045. Um, this will be the new capital of Jakarta in Borneo. I wondered, will you finish the first stage in August 2024, are you on time in terms of that? The shift to new capital is a long-term plan since the first president, Sukarno. It's my responsibility to put the policy in place, but we still check the feasibility studies. It will need funding of $33 billion, and we will use state budget to cover for 20% while the rest, 80% from private sector, from investment. And this isn't just for two years, it's for 20 years. I'm confident with a good concept and with good returns for the investments, I am sure many investors will come in. You know that many people in Indonesia look at problems, look at challenges like building new Santara that will happen long after you are supposed to give up. You are currently very popular. You have a 68% approval rating. And some people, some of your allies in the legislature have suggested you could amend the constitution so that you could do a third term, keep building this capital, keep building car factories. Can you, I wonder if you can, you've said before you don't, you will follow the constitution, but can you rule this out regardless of the constitution? Let's talk about the new capital, Nusantara, first. There is law on this that is supported by 93% of the parliament. What's there to be afraid of with that much support? Secondly, on amendment of constitution, I have said repeatedly I will abide by the constitution, although support from the parliament is at 84%. Once more, I will abide to the constitution and wishes of the people. President Jokowi, I like the sense you are still looking forward. Thank you very much for talking Bloomberg again. Thank you very much.